thank you all for coming. We really appreciate you being here with us. Um, it's a true honor to be able to work with you. It's an, a pleasure to host you here at this meeting. She says there's a lot of advisors here and everyone talks about their custodians and who service them, but you need to know that the people that work with SSG, they talk differently about you. The way that they express themselves and talk about their relationship with your firm is different. Not only establish that trust with the client, but maintain it in every interaction. And that is just simply so true, right? We all know that. That's the intangible that you always need to be on top of in order to grow your business and best serve your clients is that they trust ultimately what you're doing and how they work with your firm. Turn to the younger advisor. If you don't have a successor, find one. And tell them, build the firm, turn my firm into the firm you want to inherit. And that means create a revenue model and a business model that's appropriate for Gen X, Gen Y clients. And so that's going to be the easiest, fastest, most satisfying way to create and tend a niche, if you will. And I wasn't going to do a niche because I might offend somebody. And I wanted to be so vanilla. Lauren is divorced, is widowed, is a breast cancer survivor, and has adult children. It was like, well, doesn't that, and is Jewish, right? So that pretty much narrowed down a pretty sweet niche, right? So it's not women in transition. It's just women in general. Focus on three things. Experience, efficiency, and economics. Because at a macro level, you have to be efficient. So try to leverage technology to make sure you're efficient. Um, I don't think technology is going to replace an advisory work. That is impossible. But make your practice a lot efficient with technology. Your business is based on trust, right? And you work hard to build that trust, right? I don't think anybody in this room would argue that your business, the enabler of your business, is technology, right? Without it, you probably aren't gonna go very far. And there, there is no one answer. There is no black or white, you know, do A, B, and C in that scenario. Every circumstance is different. That's why sometimes the, the, the very lengthy investment policy statements, the three, four, five pagers, if you're going to go that long, with, make sure you're, you're following what you're saying you're doing in those things. Whether it's signed or not, probably being signed is, is better if you're in a situation where you have to defend yourself. We're always trying to, I like hearing all these efficiency sort of types of tools and, and technology because, again, if I'm spending my time or all of us are spending our time on things that aren't ultimately you know, time spent on the client. We spend tons of time testing all of our tools and processes. You know, cloud-based stuff uh, comes with a lot of, it's very uh, easy to implement, but it also comes with a lot of uh, baggage that really is important to kind of monitor. So I'd say from a pain point, um, cybersecurity, as you all know, is that thing you're sort of fighting. You're trying to use your best practices to fight it, but it's like you're fighting a ghost. 